parallelism. Until now, we studied the form tolerances, which are used to control the form of an element independent of any other element. For example, the straightness of a line. We just control the straightness of this line and we don't look at any other element on the drawing. But now we will have a look at the orientation tolerances, starting with parallelism. The orientation tolerances are these tolerances that describe the direction or orientation of an element with relation or with reference to another element on the part. For example, we want to control the parallelism of a surface with respect to another surface. We want to say that this surface has to be parallel to something else. So with the orientation tolerances, we always require a reference or a datum. Orientation tolerances include several tolerances. We have parallelism, we have perpendicularity, we have the angularity tolerance, and we can also use the line profile or the surface profile to describe or to control the orientation of an element. So, let's start with parallelism. I have this part here, which looks like a box, and I want to say that that surface should be parallel to that surface. So, in the drawing view, I want to say that this surface should be parallel to that one. And the way that I do this is I start by pointing my reference and making it a datum element. The way we point at the datum is by using this delta sign. And in this box, we give it a name. We will call it A. So, element A in this case is that surface. And I then go to my feature control frame and I put the tolerance we want. And here we are tolerating parallelism, which looks like this. We put the value of the tolerance zone in the middle section and at the end, we put our reference, our datum. So we say we want this surface to be parallel to surface A with the width of the tolerance zone of 0.1. What this means is that I have to create two surfaces that are parallel to A and the distance between these two surfaces is 0.1. Notice the difference here between this and the flatness is that my two surfaces of the tolerance zone are parallel to A. They're forced to be parallel to A. In the flatness, these two parallel surfaces or planes were not parallel to any other element or part. They were only parallel to each other. And they try to achieve the best value of the flatness for the surface. In flatness, they were parallel to the surface that I'm measuring itself. So if I have a real part that looks like this, I have a flatness tolerance of 0.1, the tolerance zone for the flatness will look like this. This will be that the orientation of the tolerance zone of flatness, but parallelism, because I chose this to be my datum feature A. Then I forced my two parallel lines to be parallel to A, and this should be the 0.1. So you can see directly here that the parallelism tolerance puts much more restrictions on the surface than the flatness because not only the surface has to be flat with the value of 0.1, but it also has to be parallel to A. I can also control the parallelism of a center line. So let's say we have this part here. Now we're looking at a section view of a part of two holes. And I want to say that this center line of these two holes has to be parallel to the other. So, I have to start by pointing at the center line of one hole and naming it the reference, and then putting my parallelism tolerance on the center line of the other hole. How do we point at center lines? By pointing at the dimension line. So I have to name this reference A. So now I named the center line of that hole element A. Then I go to the other hole and point at the center line by pointing at the dimension line. I'm saying that I want the center line of this hole to be parallel to A. So I put the parallelism on the first block. In the last block, I put my datum. I would like it to be parallel to A with a value of 0.1. I can also modify the value of the tolerance zone. Instead of writing 0.1, which means the distance between two parallel lines is 
I can also put a diameter sign end by doing this by putting this diameter sign. I changed my control zone from only parallel to drawing perspective in all directions because it's now a cylinder and a cylinder has a diameter in all directions. So if my real lines look like that without putting the diameter sign, I'm saying that I have two parallel lines and the distance between them is 0.1. But if I put a diameter sign here before the value of the tolerance zone, then I'm saying that I actually have a cylinder and its diameter is 0.1. So I not only controlled it in one direction, but in all directions. The other thing about parallelism or orientation tolerances in general is that it adds more restrictions and more control to an element than the form tolerances, for example, straightness and flatness. So you cannot put a parallelism tolerance of 0.1 to an element and also a flatness tolerance or straightness tolerance with the same value or with a greater value, because then the flatness and straightness in this case become useless. What you can do, adding a parallelism of 0.1, for example, a surface has to be parallel with another surface with a 0.1 tolerance, but also has to be flat with a 0.05. This is okay, because now you have a value for the parallelism and you want to add more restriction for the flatness. So the surface has to be flat with a value of 0.05 and it has to be parallel with 0.1. So the value of that parallelism always has to be greater than the value of the form tolerance. So, let's summarize the parallelism tolerance. My tolerance zone in the parallelism tolerance is either the diameter of a cylinder or the distance between two planes. In either case, the center line of the cylinder that forms the tolerance zone or the two parallel planes are parallel to another element on the feature and I have to name this feature by pointing at it as a datum element. Just like in plain English, you cannot say, I want that surface to be parallel, full stop. You have to continue the sentence and say, parallel to something. So, the parallelism tolerance has to have a datum. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts or questions. And if you're into leveling up your skills with expert-led content, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. For full courses, downloadable assignments, and certifications, head over to excetify.com. Start learning smarter today.